Hello once again in Grand Blue fans. Today I'm going to be doing a combat guide on Relink. I will be going over basics and advanced techniques, some of the stuff you probably know, other stuff you probably haven't heard of before. First we're going to go over the camera. Now, whenever you're playing Grand Blue, you'll notice the camera automatically follows you and tries to automate what it thinks you want, and this can be very annoying sometimes. So you'll notice whenever I'm running in a circle, the camera tries to follow and anticipate what I want from it. You can change this particular camera setting from the camera repositioning. If you turn it off, notice how the camera doesn't try to alter itself. The camera will shift away from the monster and onto you, and you kind of just want the camera locked in a certain position. The next one is battle camera repositioning. So the camera angle will try to jerk in whichever direction you're attacking if you're going to try to attack a monster. Like here you see the camera not adjusting, and then whenever I'm over here, I will auto target onto a monster and it will go to that monster. If I turn it off, it doesn't do that. Now sometimes whenever you're fighting monsters like Bahamut, it will zoom in on the ship and it will ruin your whole view. It's very annoying whenever you're fighting a monster and it zooms in underneath the map. So camera repositioning, battle camera repositioning, and camera terrain adjustment might change on preference. So if you like these options, go for it. So whenever you're in the game and you're trying to dodge, it is better to dodge into the attack than out of it. There's another way to dodge. So I call this guard dodging. I don't, I'm sure there's a real name for it. If you guard dodge, you can't really mistime your dodges because if you mess up your dodge, you still get to guard. And you can proc the perfect dodges in that way too. Now almost everything in this game can be blocked. Even the stuff that doesn't look like it can be blocked, can be blocked. If you take too much while you're blocking, your blocks can be broken. And then it takes a little bit of time for your blocks to regenerate. You'll see a blue shield whenever you block. This is basically a full health shield. You'll see now my shield is red. It's because it's recharging. Now to revive, there's two ways to revive. So here my shield is blue again. It is fully shielded. Now there is also a perfect guard. Perfect guard is the same thing as a block. Like that is a perfect guard. It's not as good as the perfect dodge though. And it really only matters if you proc certain skills. So whenever you perform a perfect guard, like shown, it fills up the stun gauge a little bit. Basically to revive, all you have to do is press buttons to revive. Now the more buttons you press, the faster you revive. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can do this number. It's much faster if you just rotate your joysticks though, like this. And you can even make it faster if you like click the trigger button. And it is also obviously faster on a mouse and keyboard because you can just smash all the buttons all day. So there is something called targeting priority. So if I were to just perform a basic attack, even facing that way, I would attack that slime right there. Like that. To avoid targeting the wrong monster, lock on. And there is something called weak point damage. If I'm attacking the monster, you will see a golden ring around the numbers. If there is no golden ring, that means that you are not attacking a weak point. No golden ring. So on this dragon, its chest is not a golden ring. Its arms are a golden ring. Also behind the monster is also a weakness in every monster. So here we have elements. So, so there's six element types in the game. Plane doesn't really count because it doesn't have an affinity. To the left of the monster's health bar is what element they're weak to, not what element they are. However, all of this is useless because of the curio drop war element. It makes everything weak to whatever you have. So now I'll go over potions, take a gander, now we'll go over links. So links are predicated on this blue gauge. This blue gauge is called the stun gauge. Whenever you fill up the stun gauge, you add points to your link meter via link attack. So that gave me 4%. Now, there are sigils that increase this. There is also blue potions. For every blue potion, you will get 2% of a link. So use those blue potions, especially if you have potion hoard. If you're a couple percentages off of the link attack, all of the party should just use a couple blue potions and you'll just get the link. You don't need to wait for the stun meter to fill. So. 
Whenever, you, whenever your link is at 100% after several link attacks, your party can actually perform a link. Whenever you go into a link, time will slow down and you get link time. The link time bonuses you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Attack, crit rate, skill cooldown, and regen. Now this is for every character, but every character also has something specific that they get in link time. For what your character does during link time, go into your masteries, it'll be an offense close to the beginning of the tree, and it will look like this, enhanced arts, level a link time. Grants unique bonuses effect during link time. All of them say that. Adept arts is always a level four and activating skills don't reset your arts gauge. Ganda Goza's eternal rage is always full during link time. So just go into your character sigils, find the thing that looks like the atom symbol and that's your link. Some characters are better than others at link attacks. Ganda Goza is probably the best linker in the game. You just sit there doing 1.7 million damage with a quick charge. Vasaraka is the same way. The stun gauge has nothing to do with breaking parts. Whenever you fill the stun gauge and perform a link attack, the stun gauge has a cooldown that you can see the gray part of the bar going down. Once it goes down, you can fill the stun gauge back up again. If you want to practice your character's link time, go into the training yard and mess with the settings in the training yard. The link attack is predicated on stun power. It looks like a little beast head. Damage and stun power are not the same thing. So you can actually break parts on a monster you have no business fighting and not be able to kill it. For a more in-depth guide on parts breaking and stun, check out this video that I made before this video. When you have the opportunity, you should perform these actions because they do increase your link attack. Now, whenever you do a link attack, link times do massive damage to monsters. So you want to get to a link time. If you can get to a link time, it will expedite the match. So now I'll go into SBAs. There's multiple ways to gain SBA at your Skybound Arts. If you take damage, notice the SBA bar, it will increase the SBA bar when you take damage. This is why whenever you see tanks just like sitting there getting smacked, you, they get their SBA in like 30 to 45 seconds because they're a tank. That's how they get their SBA. Obviously you get your SBA by dealing damage. The SBA amount that you get is not based off of how much damage you do, yet how effectively you're, you're dealing damage with that character. Character. So Overdrive Surge gives you 1%. Decimate gives me far more than 1%. And that is because of not how much damage you're physically doing. The same attack will net you the same amount of SBA, regardless of how much damage you're doing. So don't think of SBA as damage dealt. Think of it as effectiveness of you dealing damage. So there is a chain burst effect. A chain burst is when more than one character performs the SBA together. So on this current build, which I don't think I have any sigils on Jita, it does 164,360. Catalina does 170,000. And the chain burst does 664,000. So the chain burst effectively doubled my damage. So the more people you have, the more effective your SBA will be. At end game, it is actually more effective to just have two people SBAing. Typically a chain burst maxes out at 10 million. So if two people are well built, they can do over four and a half million. So if you have a full burst, you're actually losing damage because of damage cap. So if you're wondering what all of the colors inside of Grand Blue do for your damage types, take another gander. We have four screenshots. These are what all your damages mean inside of Grand Blue. So on the top left, we have a golden ring. That is the weak point that I was talking about earlier. On the right side, we have no golden ring, but two exclamation points. So these two exclamation points identify a critical hit. There's a toughness mechanic on monsters. Some parts are tougher than others. Critical hits don't care about that. So in game, that mechanic doesn't matter either because all of your hits should be crits in most scenarios. Meme builds aside. So on the bottom, we have a golden strike through with two crits no golden circle so this is not hitting a weak point but it is hitting a damage cap on the right side i have slowed this down to better visualize the strike through so you'll see a golden line strike through the number that is whenever you cannot deal any more damage because you are a damage cap so if you're wondering how to notice if you're a damage cap 
That is how. We have a mode bar. You can see mode under the right hand side of the health. On the left side, you see it, what it's weak to. Now under that level, you can see various buffs and debuffs whenever it has a buff or debuff. There's its stun bar. Once you fill up the mode bar, the monster will enter overdrive. In overdrive, the monster has various buffs as well as a damage cap limiter. Usually in overdrive, but not in always, you can see the monster enter in bloodlust. Bloodlust, you'll see, is a yellow cloaked lightning field. As shown, while in bloodlust, you cannot perform skybound arts, you cannot afflict the monster with status ailments, such as Paralyze. You will see the buff underneath the level bar that is... Whenever you break the overdrive meter, the monster goes into a break mode. When the monster is in break mode, it can be afflicted by status ailments, but do not afflict anything like Paralyze on it, or it will actually knock it out of break mode. Break mode is just the game giving you a chance to put hurt on the monster. Left, underneath the level bar, you will see a orange symbol. That is the symbol for bloodlust. So if you cannot see what's going on because of a laser disco circus happening on your field, just look underneath the monster's health bar. If that orange symbol is there, don't try to SBA. Whilst the monster is in bloodlust, they will take far less damage because of damage cap. They also have an extra damage cap limiter inside of Bloodlust. This is a farming spreadsheet that I have made for this game. This is just one tab. So if you are interested in any of the farming sheet, it does have what stuff drops from what quests, the best ways to farm, what sigils to grind for, and all of the status ailment symbols and what they mean. If you are interested in the sheet, it will be in the description. If you are interested in the how the sheet works, this is the link of me describing how I made the spreadsheet and everything. Please watch this farming guide link. Whenever everything is figured out about the honors system, I will put an honors guide out, but no one knows for sure, so I don't want to give anyone any misinformation. So that was my combat guide. If y'all liked it, like it. If you didn't, tell me what I can do better in the next one. Y'all have a good one. Let me know what I missed.